Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and I'm back again to tell you a little bit more about my story. The mindset of a trailblazer. And I'm excited about talking about this part today because this was another fun thing that happened. It was challenging for me again, of course, because I was dealing with uh, Joe Jackson. You heard my story last time about Joe Jackson and how I was inches away from millions, if not billions of dollars. Um, and just things happen in life. You know, things came up and Joe made a decision that, uh, in my opinion and his opinion now, was not the best decision in the world, but it was a decision that he made. And it affected a lot of people. It affected millions of people around the world, in my opinion. But um, there was some other things that happened over that time. Because right after getting together with Joe, um, I got together with his son. Because his son was a genius also. And his son created something very, very unique. Uh, remember, this is back around the 2000 area. Right around 2000. And that was right around the California lottery had just um, got implemented into the state. And um, Joe's son, his name was Victor, uh, was a genius on the computers, man. I mean, this dude was amazing. Uh, he was one of the first people who even told me anything about the internet. I remember I was at his house one day. But um, he had created this, this software package. And the software package, um, if you put it into your computer, it would give you all of the accurate numbers of the lotto picks, the most frequently called numbers. And it hit a lot of times. So... He had all had um, been tracking all the back numbers. Every single week he was tracking the numbers of the lotto. So that if you put it into the system, this computer program would spit out the numbers that are most likely to win the lottery tickets. And so he had a lot of winning numbers that had hit before, you know, different, different denominations and everything. So when I met with him, um, he came to me and said, Stephen, I have this software. And this was, remember, Joe's son, so we knew each other already. He said, Stephen, I have this software. I'd like to be able to get this out to the market. I said, okay, well, have you tried software stores? He goes, yeah, it's hard to get it in software stores because they're, you know, nobody wants to buy them. We put them in there. Nobody even knows about them. I said, well, I have a great idea. Why don't we do this? Instead of taking it to software stores, people are buying lottery tickets at the convenience stores. Why don't we take that software and sell it to convenience stores and have them put it right on the shelf? So as soon as they're buying the lottery ticket, they actually are buying the lottery tipster as well. So he goes, man, that's a great idea. So what we did was we, he packaged it in a really thin little package that you could sit in these little take one stands. So I went out and I bought a laptop. I um, went and I bought a bunch of banners, those big old yellow banners. And I remember it said, uh, the, without, um, buy, playing the lottery without a um, system is like throwing your money away. And so that was where I got that phrase from. I've been using that phrase even to the, this day. But it was funny because... Uh, we made these banners and we, because we had, I had went out and I got um, AMPM Mini Market. They were willing to do a test on all of Southern California's different stores. I also had went to a company called Cormark. Now, Cormark was a distributor. What they would do is they'd sell to convenience stores. They're the biggest one in the country. Well, they were back then. And they would sell different products and services to convenience stores. I went and negotiated a deal with Cormark to take the lottery tipster into these convenience stores. And they did. They said, yes, absolutely, we'll do it. So after we got everything set up and ready to go, um, we, I went and did the negotiation with both stores, um, the AMP Mini Market, Cormark. They were ready to go. We made all these banners. I spent over $5,000 of my own money getting these banners. I quit my job. So I'm sitting here ready to go. So what ended up happening, I went to the stores to put them in, and uh, Cormark came and said, you know, we have a little challenge. Uh, your lottery tips are packaged. It's, I know it's $16.95 for the, for the software, but on the package, or the back of the package, it says $10 more if they want the back lottery numbers. Because what he was doing was he was doing like an upsell where if, if they buy the lottery tipster package, then they can actually buy the lottery ticket numbers, the back order, for another $10. So that was kind of like his upsell profit. That's what he was going to do. But the problem was he put the price of it right on the outside of the package. So when someone's buying the package, they're looking at $26 in a convenience store. Now, the average cost at a convenience store, Cormark told me, was around $3. So go from $3 average to, you know, $26, it made it a big jump. So they said, Stephen, can you just change the packaging, take off the $10 off the back, $16.95, we believe that can work. So I said, okay, no problem, let's do it. So I went over to um, Victor's house and Joe was there. And Joe was still upset because I uh, would have with Busby, but 
it was funny because, you know, he, he talked about that forever. But uh, Victor came to me and I said, Victor, can we um, change these packages? It won't cost that much. I mean, if you could spend about $800, because I'm tapped out. I've spent thousands on, on everything. I don't have any more cash to change the packaging. But if you could change the packaging, then we got a &P Mini Market. Um, we got a few Circle Ks, but we also got Cormark that is willing to do a test all of Southern California and half of the United States or Western United States. They would be willing to test the product for us. And he said, I can't do it. And I said, did you not understand what I just said? Um, all we had to do was change the packaging. It cost about $800 to change it. Nope, we can't spend any more money on it. I was like, why can't you spend any more money? You've gone this far. You've spent all this money to create it, what you've done. Why would you spend $800 to get the package? He goes, because, you know, I've already spent all I have. I, I told my wife I would not get to spend any more money on this thing unless we made sales on it. I said, Victor, we're going to make sales. We're right there. We're inches from success. We got these people that want the product, that are willing to take it and willing to sell it and, and test it on their own dollar. They're not even charging you anything to do it. They're willing. They believe in your product. Let's just, just change the packaging, dude. I don't have the money. If I had it, I'd do it. He said, I can't do it. I said, okay. I said, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go find the money. I'll go figure out where $800 I can get the extra $800 from. Because I had maxed every credit card out. I mean, I so got to quit my job. I had borrowed $5,000 from a family member. I did all kinds of stuff to get the lottery, that, that lottery tipster up and running. Because, uh, you know, that was my second you know, chance to make it big so I could build these enterprise and I can centers, enterprise centers. And I came back about two weeks later. I remember I was at uh, Victor's house and he walked in and I, he sat down. He looked a little, little sullen. He looked, you know, down and downtrodden. And I was like, what's the matter, um, Victor? He goes, I lost the patent on my product. And I said, what? How did you lose the patent on your own product? He said, because my ex-wife, you know, I borrowed $12,000 from her dad and her dad, um, you know, said if we didn't sell it by a certain day that we would lose the patent and he would own the rights to the product and that day was yesterday. I said, so wait a minute, let me make sure I'm understanding. So you gave me three months to pull this off without telling me. I spent every dime I had, I borrowed money, I quit my job, everything, and I only had a three month window to get this out there and I did all I did and you didn't tell me that until now? He goes, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about that. And I was like, that's why you wouldn't spend $800 more, would you? He goes, yeah, that's, that's really what the issue was. Man, it was tough. That was another, you know, big blow. Because, you know, I really wanted to do some big things with Joe. That family, I love those brothers. I really wanted to do some big things for them and with them. But... You know, they, they were not making the right decisions. And because of that, uh, I didn't, I lost everything again. You know, I, I was now a, in a, in a worse financial position. I was probably now at about $40,000 in debt at that point um, going after this dream. I was trying to get this big dream that I believed in, this I can center that I you know, talked about in the second session or first session or so. But... Man, it was just so tough. I had went and got hit in the jaw again, dude. It was just so crazy how many times I I was like right there, right there, because I had this big dream that I believed in, and that's all I could think about. I sleeped it. I talked about it. I wrote about it. I wrote dream boards about it. I pursued it with hot pursuit, and this was another big setback for me. So now I'm at like number four or five big setbacks at this point. Um, and I'm getting into debt at the same time. So, but the, but here, here was the, the coolest part about it. I still had a big dream that I believed in. And I made a decision I would not quit. There was nothing going to stop me because watching that video, countering the conspiracy to destroy black boys, did something inside. See, it's not what happens to you that makes the man. It's what you do about it that makes the man. It's who is inside that makes the man. And I knew that. And I knew I wasn't quitting. And I didn't quit. You know, I can't say that it hurt bad. Because like I said, that was probably my fourth or fifth big hit when I was young. Now, you know, got to remember, I'm still only 21 years old. This is point, 22 years old or somewhere around there. 
Um, I have went through a lot already. Uh, but uh, let me just tell you right now, keep listening to these videos because I'm going to tell you, I'm just getting started, my friend. Uh, this journey has been a 30-year journey, <laughs> a 30-year dream. And we're, we're just at year two. So I, I appreciate you guys listening to these messages. I've been getting great comments on Facebook. I pray that you guys share this message and share it with your friends and people that you know because you're going to hear something that you may have never heard before. Someone's entire life journey from nothing to something to nothing to something to nothing to something great. And I'm going to tell you right now, this message is going to be like nothing you've ever heard before. So I just hope this is inspiring to you. I hope that um, something I say can spark you to look at your life to see how God's using you. And the path you're going is there to impact others. It's not just for you. You're not going through what you went through for nothing. You're going through it for someone. Someone's listening to this message that says, you know what, that was me. I went through something like that. And if he can do it, I can do it. So again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this message, listening to my story. And I appreciate you guys. I'll see you soon. And you guys have a great night. Love you guys. Bye-bye.